Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. My name's John Finch. You know, sometimes you take photographs and you look at them afterwards and they're dull. They're grey. There's no contrast to them, no punch. And if you'd measured the light in the scene, you'd probably have found that you didn't have a great deal of contrast. That when you exposed for your shadows, put them in zone three, and then examined the highlights, the highlights maybe only came in at zone seven or zone eight. That's too dull. That's very flat. That's not a very punchy image. And you might want more contrast in your photograph. Another reason the contrast might be low is the subject. Say, for instance, I'm going to make this up. You're going to take some photographs of tree bark. Well, the tree bark hasn't got a great deal of contrast to it. Most of it, in most trees, is the same color. There's some shadow, sure, but there's not a great deal of difference. There's certainly no bright white highlights. There is a way to get around that, and that is to use N plus development. With N plus development, we're actually going to increase the contrast of our film, and we do that through developing longer. Now I'm going to go outside now, and I'm going to show you how to find out your N plus development time for FX55 and our film of choice at the moment, FP4 plus. We're going to do N plus one today, and then after the video, I'll tell you how you might do N minus one. See you out there. So in the last few weeks, we've been looking at how exposure controls our shadows and how development controls our highlights. In the last couple of weeks, we've used the fact that development controls our highlights by finding out the development time for FP4 in FX55. And it's seven minutes for me. For you, it might be slightly different. What does that seven minutes mean? Well, that's called N development. And N development means that my zone nine is exactly zone nine when I develop the film. If I'd overdeveloped it, the zone nine would have gone up. And if I underdevelop it, the zone nine would come down. N plus one is to actually deliberately find the time of development that moves our zone eight into zone nine. Now, this does not affect our low values very much at all. So the fact that we found our ISO and we've placed our shadows in zone three, they're not gonna move from zone three. It's really like you're stretching a rubber band, but the stretch isn't equal. The lower part of the rubber band is much stronger and stays put. And the upper part of the rubber band is thinner and weaker and moves up easily. So if you imagine it that way, we can control our high zones without messing up our low zones, our shadows and those darker parts of our photograph. So just to recap, N plus one is to move our high zone, say zone eight, up into zone nine, up one zone, N plus one. N plus two would move um, zone seven up to zone nine, two zones, N plus two. N minus one would be to move zone nine down to zone eight or eight to seven. Uh, usually we're talking though about the highest zone. That's the one that we have most control over and the one we can see most easily in our testing. So N plus one development, how are we going to do that? Well, it's pretty straightforward and you've probably guessed already what I'm going to do here. Here's my board again and I filled the frame of my camera with this board and I've set the camera to infinity so it's completely out of focus. I now take a meter reading of the board, make sure it's evenly lit, and do this at a time when it, the light is not going to change. Get my exposure right for that. That would be a zone five exposure. So let's just set that up to start with. So I've got my ISO of 200, which is what we've ascertained the film gives us with FX55. And I'm looking at this and it's a 60th at 11 and a half. So I'm going to put that on the camera, 11 and a half and 60. And that's going to give me a zone five negative, right? Because meters will always give you zone five for whatever they're pointed at. But I want a zone eight. And the reason I want a zone eight is because I'm going to overdevelop this film by a certain amount of time and see if I can move that zone eight up into zone nine. And as soon as I work out the time of development, that moves my eight to nine, 
I have n plus one development. I have a time that I can write down and use forevermore with this developer and film combination. So let's make our zone eight negative. So I've got my zone five set up on here. I'm gonna open it up three stops. There we are. So that's four and a half. F four and a half at a sixtieth of a second. And I'll take the photograph. I've just made a zone eight negative. Now I've already taken a couple of shots before this and I'll take a few more now just to finish this short clip of film. I'll go in the dark room and I'll see you in there for the development cycle. So I did two tests in all. Um, this one at the top is plus 30% from my N development time of seven minutes. So plus 30% on that is nine minutes and six seconds. And this one here was a second uh, roll I put through, which is plus 15%. So in case this is too much, I wanted a 15% one as well. So let's get these under the enlarger and let's do our test. I've set up the negative, the plus 30% negative in the enlarger. And I've set the enlarger exactly the same as my previous tests in previous videos in this series. So if you want to know a little bit about that, just look at those previous um, videos of this series. I have a piece of paper here, a small piece of paper. And if you remember, I I'm going to use three seconds on my timer and I'm going to expose this piece of paper to seven times three second exposures. Now that's important that you don't make that 21 seconds. It's not 21 seconds because there's bulb warm up time and bulb deterioration time as it switches on and off. And if you try to convert three seconds times seven into 21, it's not the same amount of time. So stick with your test time of, in my case, seven times three seconds. You must do this accurately or it's not worth doing at all. Everything's set up. My enlarger's set up. My lens is set up. The filter is set to grade two. I've got D30, a density of 30 set up on the enlarger head, which is exactly what I had before. Three stops down on the lens. Now I'm going to cover half of this paper up here. So I'm going to expose only half of it to seven times three seconds with the zone eight negative. Of course, what I'm hoping for is when I develop this, that there'll be a slight grayness to the exposed side of the paper compared to the total white of the covered and exposed side. That will mean, that very slight grayness will mean I've moved my zone eight up into zone nine. Zone eight into nine. Zone eight is quite gray on the paper. Zone nine is just a touch gray. So we will have, we will have done N plus one development. Let's try it out. One. Two. Three. It's always a good idea to count out loud when you're doing this. Four. Because then you really remember where you're at. Five. Six. Seven. Right. I'm now going to process this piece of paper and we'll see if it's gray or not. Here is my plus 30%. And let's see, I can't tell which side is which. There's nothing. There's no difference in the highlight value at all. So plus 30% has pushed our zone eight above zone nine, basically above where it will show on the paper. So that's too much. It's too much development. It's overdeveloped. So let me go back to the enlarger and I'll try the 15% extra developing time instead of 30. So I'm back and this time I've got my zone eight negative from the plus 15% development. Plus 30% was obviously too much. So I've tried plus 15 and let's try this. So exactly the same. I'm going to cover up half of the paper 
I use a thick piece of card for this, so there's no way light can get through this. I actually cut the bottom off the bottom of the boxes of paper, so it's very thick and it's black, so it doesn't reflect light. So there it's covered up, and I'll give it seven more exposures, just like previously. One. Two, three. Here's my 15%, and I can see a tonal difference. Just, it's a very slight gray, which is really good. That's exactly what I wanted. Can you just make it out? It's very slightly gray on the left hand side. That is zone nine. So with 15% extra development. My zone 8 has gone up to zone 9. That is n plus 1 development. And now I have a time to write down for that. Forevermore, I know n plus 1 with fx55 and fp4 plus. Run at an ISO of 200. So there you have a demonstration on n plus 1 development and how to find it. To get n plus 2, I would expose a negative to zone 7 and develop it longer until I got that just off white, until I'd moved that seven up to nine. Now, when you add N plus two, you usually add a touch to your ISO. So add a third of a stop, increase your ISO from 200 to 250 for N plus two exposures. For N minus one, take a zone 10 negative and reduce development until it brings the 10 down to nine. There's N minus one. For N minus two, you would reduce your ISO by a third of a stop. And the way to, to actually work it out on the paper is to take a zone 10 negative and compare it to a correctly exposed zone eight. Now to do that, take your zone eight negative and give it normal development, absolutely normal, N development, seven minutes in our case. And then make your test piece of paper using your seven times three seconds or whatever your exposure is with your enlarger. And that will give you a gray, which is zone eight. And then take your zone 10 negative, develop it for less, bring it down with development until you've brought that down to the same level of gray as your known zone eight. And it's quite easy to look at the two and decide, yes, it's too light or it's too dark. And you can work out your n minus two time through that, through observing and comparing to your zone eight. I hope that makes sense. So today's video was brought to you by my patrons. One of them actually asked this question, how do I get n plus development? So I made this video for my patrons and for you guys. I want to thank my patrons. If you want to join Patreon, please do. It's patreon.com slash John Finch. Uh, and become a subscriber to my Patreon. It supports the channel, it supports the videos, it supports my books. Thanks ever so much. And I'll see you again next week.